So why in the world would you want to change your brain waves? Well, the rub and the pain point is if you don't know how to do it, you're like a feather on the wind and you're just going with every thought and imagination that hits your brain. And that is like a type of hell on earth. And especially if you get caught in the one where you're in fight, flight, or freeze, you have you know, the survival mode, you have to have a guarantee, you won't make a move because you're always second guessing, you're analyzing and you become paralyzed and it wakes you up in the night to beat you up. So that's why Albert Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same brain that created it. And Bruce Lipton, I'm not sure if you're familiar with his teachings, but in his biology of belief, it is amazing. He really breaks it down of why we need to change our beliefs and why we need to change our brain states and what that does for our health. And even Christ said in Matthew that you have to change and come to him as little children in order to enter the kingdom. What is that talking about? That's talking about brain waves. So we need to be able to move past language so we can commune with our source. We can commune with God. We can get to that peace that passes understanding and we can begin to have synchronicities in our life and we're, be a we're able or will be able to see paths that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to see and solutions that escape us when we are in that brain wave of fight, flight, or freeze. Let's go over the Cliff Notes version, the non-scientific version, the experiential version of the brainwave states because we wanna to begin to build an awareness of what they are. So when we want to practice moving in and out of specific brainwaves, we'll be able to identify which one we're in. So the first one I wanna talk about is beta and beta is really important and very valuable when we need to be highly alert and aware and focus such as if you have a big project at work or some project you're trying to complete, you wanna be aware and alert and you wanna have that pinpoint laser focus. It's also really important in the case of, let's say your life is in danger. You wanna be able to make a good decision. Do I stand and fight or do I need to flee? That is beta. The problem is when we maintain beta or we get stuck in beta, we get woken up in the night and we think about the shoulds, we start shitting all over the place, I should have done this, I should have done that. That is when we have adrenaline and cortisol racing through our body and we get stuck there and then we have a breakdown in our overall health. And so beta is where addictions reside. And for me, the example that I would give is I had a trauma when I was a little, and I think as a result of that, I was continually in survival mode and I would continually look around like, when's the next shoe gonna drop? Like, where's the danger gonna come from this time? And so I started to have this bad eating disorder. And the reason being that we get addictions is because on a on an emotional and a physiological level, we're never meant to stay stressed out like that. And so we instinctively look or grab for something that will give us a release so we can relax. So for me, before there were eating disorders, I had an eating disorder. I would have this odd behavior because I needed to figure out a way to get out of the fight, flight, or freeze mode. And so maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you have anxious thinking and so you come home from work and you kick your shoes off and you plop down on the couch and you watch some stupid program and eat a whole bag of chips before you even know what you're doing because you're trying on a certain level to get out of beta brain waves or you know maybe you look at social media too much maybe you're over shopping maybe you know you're drinking too much maybe you're doing drugs or maybe it's pornography and you just feel so bad about yourself because you can't get out of that bad habitual pattern well that is beta brain waves and we were never meant to stay there and that's why we end up grabbing for things so we can get a release so we can relax so the next one is alpha and alpha is where our imagination is flowing and our uh, inner world is alive and that's when we have inner quietude. That's when we are in what is called the generous present moment. And for me, the example is when I am behind the boat and my husband's getting ready to 
pull me around wake surfing. I am not thinking about anything in my past. I am not thinking about my future. I am thinking about the fun I am getting ready to have. And I am concentrating on finding that wake and being able to throw the rope in to find that sweet spot so I can wake surf behind the boat. Or if you look at professional athletes, you know, that are in a flow state, like they are just in the zone, making magic happen, hitting each shot, climbing a mountain with no ropes, whatever it is, that is alpha. Or maybe you are a musician and you're learning a new piece of music and you are just engrossed in learning that those notes of what you need to play next or sing next, or maybe you're a scrapbooker and you're working on this beautiful thing, project that you're doing and you, you get lost in time because you are in the present moment of um, completing that project. That is beautiful alpha. Then the next one is theta. And theta is, I would say, where inspiration and imagination and inner quietude takes place. It is where we have a heart opening and we feel more connected with others. And you know, we just, imagination has its full way with us. And so what's so interesting about it is that children from the age of two to six years old, they are in theta. And that's why you can give a kid a broomstick and it will play horsey all day long because they are in theta. They can lay under a tree and just be like, wow, or they can find a frog and be enthralled with the frog, or you can give them a teacup and they'll play tea party all day. That is theta. And we can also be in theta and we can practice theta, but we have to get out of our habituated self. And this is what was so valuable about reading Becoming Supernatural and going to the week-long event of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Because when I first started to meditate, I would close my eyes and it would literally be like something was throwing rocks at my eyes. They would, they'd be like that. And I began to become aware that I was stuck in a brainwave state and I couldn't get in to theta or I couldn't get into imagination or I couldn't get into inner quietude because I was stuck in survival mode. And what happens is when we become habituated and we become stressed out and we're functioning in beta, we lull our soul to sleep and nothing exciting can happen because we have to have guarantees. We can't be in the present moment. We can't be in alpha and we certainly can't move into theta. And so theta is when like the, the body would be asleep, but the mind is awake. And that's what we learned when I went to the week long at Niagara Falls. He has us lay down and almost fall asleep and then wakes us up so we can learn how to make the body go asleep, but the, the, the mind is awake. And that is why Christ would say, you have to change and come to me as little children. Like, what does that mean? Like, how do I do that? That's brainwave states. We have to be like little children and we have to be out of the analysis and paralysis overthinking mode and get to alpha and then to theta and have our brain waves and our heart open so we can commune with the divine so we can have that peace that passes understanding we can have that being seated with christ in heavenly realms and so the next one is delta which is really interesting is delta brain waves little kids or infants or newborns are there from zero to two and so literally they are asleep with their eyes open part of the time and delta is when we are in deep sleep and that's where rejuvenation and healing and wholeness happens but the really cool thing is is we can practice delta and that's what like monks do, like they've hooked, uh, you know, the brainwave machines, can't think of what the name is, up to monks. And they have been awake, but their brain waves are in delta and gamma and they're having this full inner experience, although it looks like they're asleep. So we can do that as well. And my delta brainwave experiences were really phenomenal. And that's where 
you know, I was able to encounter angels and heaven could have its full impact in my life. And so when we begin to learn how to move out of beta into alpha, into theta and into delta, that's when synchronicities, that's when, you know, we can have encounters with people and that's when we can see paths that we wouldn't ordinarily see when we get out of the fight, fight or freeze mode. And so what and how I want to leave you with a few tools and a couple thoughts before we wrap this up, but I will be doing a follow up video where I go into more detail on the tools that I use to change my brain states. But the first tool I want to talk about is breath work. And I know that I sound like a broken record, but it really is like the fastest way to move yourself from a beta brainwave to a, a different brainwave because it helps you realize when you end up pulling that energy up into your brain kind of knocks your brain into a different state and the first time I was exposed to it I went to the um, Niagara retreat in September of 2019 and we did the breath work and I literally felt nothing and then um, Dr. Joe brought people on stage and they went after the breath work and I was like whoa I want that and so, so since September 2019 till this day like I have done a massive amount of breath work every day and I really feel like it has taught me to become aware of changing brain states or changing my brain waves. So I'll list some videos, ones that I've done and other people that I think are really helpful. And then the second thing is I would say, just remember you have two ears and one mouth and maybe you should learn to listen like I've had to do twice as much as I speak when I'm in prayer. You know, that's why it says be still and know that I am God because when we're continually going to the divine or source or God or whatever you want to call that being in your life and rehearse our problems we can't solve any problems or hear any guidance when we're continually talking about the negative negative. and so you know Eckhart Tolle is a master at explaining about how to become silent on the inside but as I was preparing for this I was thinking about guided meditation and the impact that it has had on my life and it you know I was like okay what are the the meditators guiding me to do they're guiding me to change my brain states to become still on the inside so i would highly recommend that you also try to start cultivating stillness and i will also list some things that i think are helpful and then i would say stop drop and roll and if you've listened to some of my other videos this was really a biggie for me it was one of my mystical experiences that i had with these uh benevolent beings and when i have these interactions it's not like it's a big dissertation of language normally how it happens is they'll drop a word picture into my heart and then you know they'll expound on it or they'll say some words after that and when they said stop drop and roll i saw this alarm and that i was supposed to set an alarm every couple of hours and so I do that and I have a word go off every time the alarm goes off like breathe or peace or you know stillness or whatever it is that I feel led to put and what I do is instead of being on fire and I stop drop and roll what I do is when that alarm goes off I stop and I get out of my beta brain waves and my overthinking and my pinpoint focus and I drop down into my heart and then I try to roll into another brain wave and slow my thinking down. Because, you know, why wait to practice these things till meditation or why wait to practice, you know, Delta when we fall asleep? We can, that's why they call it a practice. We can begin to cultivate those skills on a daily basis. And this seems to have really worked well for me. And then the other one is daydreaming or using your imagination, you know, the scriptures talk about vain imaginations and to me what that is it's when you're in beta and when you're in fight flight or freeze or when you're totally stressed out your imagination is like an altimeter and if you are stressed you're looking down and you're going to crash your plane into the dirt and so instead when you when you begin to shift your brain waves and you begin to become acquainted surrender your imagination to the divine and start using your imagination to imagine the things that you want to create in your life. That's why it says focus on things of a good report as a man thinketh in his heart. 
so is he and there is a software called a mind movie that you can use and you can set music to your mind movie and then you just put you know either short video clips or photographs of things that you want to create and watch that instead of always rehearsing the bad and then i would say awareness is a biggie and beta is like this beta is like you can't see anything peripheral around you and alpha and theta and delta is where your awareness is really really expanded and so um, Eckhart Tolle is amazing at this but what I do when I go out to do my walking meditation in the morning the first 20 minutes um, it's cold and now and it's dark and there's no one out and I don't have my glasses on or I don't have my contacts in so I just practice not thinking and I become aware if the mo if the moon is still out if stars I notice the trees I listen for the crickets I just become expanded in my awareness and it's something that you can practice instead of going on autopilot when you drive home try to be aware of the things that you miss every day when you drive into your neighborhood or you know if you're washing the dishes try to be present and be aware of when you're washing the dishes it really is a valuable tool and then for such a time as this I want to tell you if you haven't been told is that we have choice we can choose to have a life filled with a connection to the divine and synchronicities. We haven't really understood that we had choice. It says in Deuteronomy, choose you this day, life or death, blessings and cursings. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can choose the brain wave and the brain state and the state of consciousness that you are in. And it's really exciting because Rumi says that which is you are seeking is seeking you and so the very thing that you're desiring is the very thing that wants to communicate with you and open you up and have you ride on those high places and the last and final thought i'm going to leave you with is i would highly recommend that you study this out for yourself about the beta alpha theta and delta because it really is like a hidden code that has been around forever and if you don't understand the code in these ancient texts, and specifically I'm talking about the Bible, but all of them um, have this in it, there is a code that has been trying to tell us that we need to moderate or modulate or modify our thinking. And so beta, alpha, theta, and delta correspond with the four elements, which are earth, and then water, air, and fire. And I don't want you to believe me on this. I would love for you to study it out. But if we are earthy, if we are navel gazing and looking down, we are going to crash our plane into the dirt. That is earth. And then the water part, if you believe in Christianity, and even if you don't, if you look at the, the similitude of it, John the Baptist came to baptize us with water and to prepare the way for us to commune or meet Christ. And water is the same as alpha. Okay, that's the generous present moment. We have to be in the gener generous present moment in order to commune with the divine. So it's um, earth and then uh, water. The next one is air. Where are we to meet Christ? We're to meet Christ in the air and that is theta in order to commune with the divine and to see the path through the wilderness and rivers in the desert to ride on the high places to be seated with christ in heavenly realms to have the door to the mystical open to be able to really commune and know source we have to be into theta we have to meet christ in the air or the theta brain waves and then the one who comes after Christ baptizes, was, baptizes us with fire. That is the element of fire. That is delta. That is the door to the non-physical. That's when we have, you know, 
communion with the saints and we have interactions with divine beings and that's when you know we can see the angels and that's when we really can experience the true essence of whose source is that's when heaven whatever if you call it heaven or that's when higher dimensions can have its full impact on us but i would really encourage you not to believe me and to study it out for yourself because it is an ancient code it is a technology it's not just modern science that we can use, but it is an ancient code and a technology that has been around probably forever that is for us to use. And it's for such a time as this for you to explore it. So thank you for your time. It's so important to me because it's been so impactful that I would love for you to like and subscribe. If you've, this has resonated with you, hit the notification bell because I'm going to be coming out with more videos. But until then, I hope that you ride on the high places and you're blessed.